viewers all over the world, thank you for joining us on today's broadcast, coming to you live from the Ark of God's Covenants Ministry. Time spent with Jesus Christ is time well spent. Time spent with Jesus Christ is time with results. I want to assure you that your time is well spent. Thank you for joining us. Bow down your heads, wherever you are watching us from, whichever medium you are using to watch us, bow down your heads. Let's pray together. Say after me, Father, forgive me my sins. Teach me to forgive. I need to forgive because I too need to be forgiven. Lord, always remind me that no man or woman is perfect. There is no such thing as a perfect person. This is not a perfect world. Everyone makes mistakes. Mistakes are correctable. The worst of sins can be forgiven. Teach me to forgive. Teach me to follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord. People of God, God is the compassionate healer of our wounds. I pray, let his compassion check your passion. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yes, our message today is titled, God is God of another chance. God is God of another chance. Turn with me to the book of Psalms 103. That's where we take our proof text. Psalms 103, we start reading from verse 8. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. God is God of another chance. The door of his mercy and compassion are wide open. They are unlimited. Jesus Christ loves to speak peace and forgiveness into the lives of sinners who are truly repentant. Even on the cross, in the heat of Pain and agony, he spoke kind and comforting words to his crucifiers. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. The Bible says, faith works by love. A person who cannot love or forgive cannot advance in his spiritual life because forgiveness makes future possible. Jesus Christ always gives us another chance. If we fail to give those who offend us another chance, then we are thinking and working against the golden rule set by our role model and mentor. Jesus Christ, why on the cross of Calvary? In that Luke 
23 verse 34. A person who cannot love or forgive cannot be entrusted with such power to overcome his enemies, to be victorious. David knew the spiritual benefits of forgiveness and applied them in his daily life. And this demoralized, destabilized, paralyzed, and neutralized his foes. His arch enemy, King Saul, with all the paraphernalia of his royal office and military might, could not withstand the weapon of forgiveness always unleashed by the young, rustic, and seemingly inexperienced shepherd boy, David. Even when David had occasions to kill King Saul, the spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness always restrained and overwhelmed him. To this, he later wrote in Psalms 109 verse 3 to 5, they hate me for my friendship, but I give myself to prayer. They persecute me, but I give myself to prayer. They launch campaign of calumny against me, but I give myself to prayer. They call me names, but I give myself to prayer. This is a lasting lesson for believers. Every armor of God has its offensive and defensive use. When you are hated, love should become your protection against the hatred of the adversary. When you are persecuted, forgiveness should be your protection against the persecution of the adversary. Where you are cheated, kindness should be your protection against the injustice of the adversary. Are you hurt? Give them another chance. Are you cheated? Give them another chance. Are you hated? Give them another chance. Are you persecuted? Give them another chance because God has given you another chance. Forgiveness does not permit us to consider how far we have come because if we were to consider how far we have come, we would not want to share our dividends of success. I mean our proceed of victory when King David was forced to flee from his son Absalom, one member of King Saul's house, Shimei, stood on the way and ran insults on the exiled king. But when David regained his throne, he did not avenge his adversaries. He rather invited and made peace with them because he knew that people make mistakes. Even if you are a pastor, even if you are a Christian, you are liable to error, mistakes. There is no such thing as a perfect person. People make mistakes. Whether husband or wife, Friend or business associates, our response to a person who makes mistakes can be a mistake if care is not taken. Our concern must be twofold. Not only what we do, that is an error, but how we respond to it. Forgiveness is the most effective response. You need to forgive. Because you need to be forgiven. I need to forgive. Because I need to be forgiven. 
The situation we are confronted with today does not call for quarreling, pointing of fingers, name calling, gossiping, or open display of hostilities. But for us to pray the more, fast the more, forgive the more, it is more pleasant to do good to the ungrateful than to do good to the grateful. This is why the ingratitude of the people did not affect Jesus' zeal to do good. Though he was called Beelzebub, prince of demons, he simply continued to do good. Jesus knew his accusers were ignorant, intolerant, arrogant, insolent, impatient, and unschooled in things of the spirit. The Bible enjoins us to keep doing good, even in the face of unprovoked attacks and criticisms. Keep doing good. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 15 says, By doing good, you are able to educate your uninformed critics and cynics. You cannot correct someone by criticizing them without love. Neither can you improve a situation by speaking negatively about it. The book of 1 Peter 4 verse 8 indicates that true love does not discuss sin. True love does not discuss sin. True love does not take journeys into yesterday. There is danger in looking back if you want to mend differences in a relationship unless it is to glorify God for what he has done, for what he has accomplished in that relationship. Jesus has given his children salvation through the forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness does not question the past, but focuses on the future. Forgiveness does not bring up past accounts that were paid for or forgiven. If you are spiritual, when your friend or partner falls, don't rejoice. Restore him or her. In Mark 11 verse 25, Jesus clearly links faith to forgiveness. The reason forgiveness is so important is because a relationship does not involve two perfect people. There is no such thing as a perfect person. On this planet Earth, those perfect do not exist on this planet Earth in the face of outright condemnation and acrimonious criticism. Jesus Christ offered forgiveness. When you are hated, when you are called names, forgive. The Bible advises that we do something good to reverse the unpleasant situation at hand. That is, do good to change the bad you see. Do good to change the bad you see. Let the beauty of Jesus Christ be seen in you. By the way you act. By the way you talk. By the way you relate with people. So that people will follow your God. Remember, beautiful people are those who mirror Christ. Your lifestyle should serve as a magnet to bring unbelievers to follow Christ. Because where there is honey, insects seek it. So let your words, your attitude, your character, Become a photograph 
of the future you desire, not the future you fear. Look at your past, and you will see disobedience to God's command, impurities, corruption, unfaithfulness, and all kinds of passions and forbidden pleasures. Whether victims or perpetrators, accused or accusers, complainants or defendants, we all stand in helpless need of God's divine forgiveness. What is your situation? Are you a murderer? Are you a prostitute? Are you a smoker? Are you a drunkard? Are you an idolater? Are you a witch doctor? Are you a gambler? Remember, the worst of sin can be forgiven. We all make mistakes with our lives. But when you make mistake, as we all do, do not run from Jesus Christ. He receives repentant souls. He loves them. He welcomes them. The worst of sin can be forgiven. Grace in the soul is a new life in the soul. A regenerate sinner becomes a living soul. Those who have good spiritual eyesight see that beauty in Christ Jesus that will effectually draw them to run after him. May today be the day you receive his mercy and favor. May today be the day you receive forgiveness in the name of Jesus Christ. No one has committed the unpardonable sin. Only God Almighty can determine whether one sin is greater than the other. Whether your sins are great or small, run to him. He is able to forgive them all. Jesus knows we are weak and so anticipates our errors. But one thing is clear. He takes pleasure in speaking peace and forgiveness into the lives of sinners who run to him and truly repent because our mistakes are correctable. Jesus Christ never disconnect himself from those who make mistakes with their lives. He knows how undeserving of his grace we ordinarily are. That is why he has decided to brush aside our unworthy past in order to give us a new future. This he does by giving us another chance. Are you hated? Give them another chance. Are you called names? Give them another chance. Are you humiliated? Give them another chance. Because you have been given another chance. Since we have been given another chance, let us learn to give others another chance. May God bless his words in your hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can watch Apostle John Chi on Act of God TV, on Act of God TV app, or our live TV stream on johnchi.org. You can follow Apostle John Chi on all social media platforms. God bless you.